Pour 3, practice paper 6, question number 1. Got this equation in terms of x and y, and we've got to find dy dx, and our answer is going to be in terms of x. Now the first thing we notice is that this equation is not written as y equals so it's not a straightforward differentiation to find dy dx. We need to do a bit more thinking about this. I'm going to start by letting u equal the information inside that bracket. Then the question becomes x equals 5 sine of, instead of 3y minus 2, it comes sine of u. Now, I must admit, it is possible to miss this out, but it depends how much you're capable of doing in your head. I would have no intention of doing this in my head at all. So this is my approach. Let's differentiate both of these equations. Let's think about it, though. When we differentiate this one, we're differentiating u with respect to y. So if we differentiate u with respect to y, we get du dy. Differentiating that is just 3. The y disappears, so there's 2. Now let's think about this differentiating. We're differentiating x with respect to u. x with respect to u is dx du. And that's going to be 5 sine differentiated is cosine. Now we actually want dy dx, don't we? We want dy dx. So that's going to be dy du multiplied by du dx. Using the chain rule, dy dx is du, dy d, as long as these two things are the same, this cancels, so dy dx equals this. That's the chain rule. So that's what we're going to use to get our dy dx. dy du, which we haven't got. What we've got is du dy. And in fact we can turn this upside down, reciprocate it, and get dy du. So we need to reciprocate the 3. Think of 3 as 3 over 1. And if we reciprocate that we'll get a third. That dy du we've got to multiply by du dx. And similarly, you can see that we haven't got du dx. We need du dx, but we've got dx du. But the same thing applies. If we reciprocate this, turn it upside down, we'll get what we're after. If we think of that as over 1 and reciprocate that, then we've got what we want. So this is looking quite good. 1 times 1 is 1, and on the bottom we've got 3 times the cosine, sorry, 3 times 5, which is 15, isn't it? We've got 15 cosine of u. We can substitute this information back for u, so we can have 15 cosine of u is 15 cosine of 3y minus 2. Now... Temptation is to say I've finished and move on to the next question. And that temptation is very high in exams. When you finish a question, you need to actually have a check to see if you've truly finished the question. When you get to what you think is the end, read the question again and then check that you've done what you've been asked to do. Because in fact I haven't finished yet. I have got dy dx as required, but I haven't got it in terms of x, so I haven't finished. Now this may seem as if I'm going on a bit about this, but it is something that happens in exams. Not just maths exams, but all, all exams. You do a question and you can think you've finished before you have. And quickly go on to the next question. So before you go on to the next question, you should also have a quick resume to see if you've finished the question. Right, we haven't finished the question, so let's have a little think. Let's look at that up there. Now, 
we know that x equals 5 sine of 3y minus 2. We need to substitute for that y something about x to get our answer in terms of x. So in other words, we've got to make y the subject of this equation. Let's start by dividing both sides by 5. Now we need to do the inverse of sine to both sides. So in other words, we've got to do the inverse sine of x over 5. Now another way of talking about inverse sine, we call that arc sine. So if we do the inverse sine of both sides, on this side we get the arc sine of x over 5. The inverse sine of this side will give us 3y minus 2. So we needn't actually go any further on this. If you look at it, we don't need to make the y the subject of that because we can replace this with this piece of information. In other words, the answer to the question, what is dy dx in terms of x, is 1 over 15 cosine of 3y minus 2, which we now know 3y minus 2 is arc sine. Missed the sine out in there, that was careless. So we know that's arc sine running out of space of x over 5. There's our answer. Sorry I'm a bit squished up there. 15 cosine arc sine of x over 5, or a fifth of x if you like. Right, that's question 1 finished. I've taken quite some time over that, I will admit. But in the exam, one would hope we know what we're doing. We can work through a bit quicker. I would do all of that. Would you? Let's look at some marks here. We'll have a mark for doing that. We'll have a mark for ending up with the correct answer, but not in terms of the correct thing. So as I say, if you stopped at that point, you'd only get three marks. One mark for messing about with this, and then one mark for substituting the information there into there to get the correct answer. So that's the end of question number one. You need to visit www.mathtutor.biz if you want to see the rest of this paper because this is paper 6 which is the last paper in my set 2 on core 3 A and AS level mathematics exam, exam papers core 3 and if you do go to the website www.mathtutor.biz and purchase your own copy of this you get the exam paper along with two other ones which you can work through. This is just, as I say, the first question. And the DVD that goes with it. And the DVD will have full solutions and full marking schemes of the whole paper. All the questions are based on actual GCS, GCSE. Duh! Are based on actual A-level questions. So... If you want the full set or any other maths, then visit www.mathtutor.biz. Hope to hear from you.